All right, guys, today we're going to work with uh, operations with functions. Um, these are new notes. We're just going to do the first page today, and we will do the second page tomorrow or next class. Um, so just make sure you're following along. Uh, this is the last section that we have. So after um, the lesson after this, we will have a little um, quiz review. You guys will take the quiz, and then we'll be ready for the test. I'm going to figure out the best way to do that. I may make a... Um, quizzes test that is somewhat timed um, as far as the amount of time you have per problem um, but we'll get into that as we approach that we're getting closer just want to get, give you guys a heads up so that you can kind of have that on your radar all right so let's get into this operations of functions um, you can add subtract multiply and divide functions reading this right here okay you can add subtract multiply and divide functions remember we name our functions f of x right you see f of x here we have g of x right here, okay? We name them. We don't just say y, right? That, that means basically the same thing as y, but we don't say that um, in case we do have multiple functions that we're working with. We need to be able to name them. So we can tell there's a difference. This is f of x here, right? And this one is named g of x. So um, just different names for functions, all right? That's, that's the purpose of that. So as you can see, what we need to do is we need to find the f of x plus g of x, right? f of x plus g of x. So what is f of x? f of x equals 3x minus 7, and g of x equals 13 minus 2x. So what we're, in a sense, doing is 3x minus 7 plus 13 minus 2x. So let's write that out, right? f of x plus g of x. f of x is 3x, and we're going to put those in parentheses. 3x minus 7 plus 13 minus 2x, all in parentheses. Now, the reason we put them in parentheses is because sometimes we need to make sure we have the parentheses. It might be multiplication. Um, it may be subtraction, where we need to distribute the subtraction sign, the minus sign. Um, in this case, we really don't need to have the parentheses, um, but always start by having them, and then we can rewrite it without them because this is an addition problem. We don't need to write, um, we don't need the parentheses because it's an addition problem. So, uh, here we go. Let's rewrite this out. It's 3x minus 7 plus 13 minus 2x. And then all we have to do here is now combine like terms and we get our final answer which we'll write below. So we have 3x minus 2x that gives us x and then negative 7 plus 13 which gives us a positive 6. So x plus 6 is our finalized answer there. All right. So again f of x is 3x minus 7, g of x is 13 minus 2x so it's asking to find f of x plus g of x so we just write them out as the functions, um, combine like terms, and we get our answers x plus 6. All right, um, let me actually write this. I'm going to write this here because, oh, no, it's fine. I had it in the right place. So x plus 6, all right, and it says the new function is denoted as, all right, what's the new function denoted as? Well, as you can see, right, we wrote it out at the top as f of x plus g of x, the way we can write this is parentheses f plus g close parentheses of x all right so this is another way to write that it means the same thing as f of x plus g of x so we're going to write them down here below i'll use a different color so f plus g of x it means the same thing as f of x plus g of x again just a name for the functions all right um Different f minus g of x is f of x minus g of x. f times g of x equals f of x times, oops, make a little, it's impossible. There we go, f of x times g of x. And then finally, f over g of x, or f divided by g of x, we just do f of x. Over g of x. All right. So this means the exact same thing. So let's go down here. All right. They give us three different functions here. All right. They give us f of x, g of x, and h of x, right? Three different functions with three different names, f, g, and h. 
All right, so for number one, all right, we need to take f plus g of x, all right, which is the same as f of x plus g of x. And if we want to write that to start here, we don't need to write it for very long, but f of x plus g of x. So what we need to do is just like we did for the top problem is find f of x, f of x is, and again, putting them in parentheses, x squared minus 8x plus 4. plus g of x, which is 4x minus 3. Again, we can drop the parentheses here. All right? You don't need to rewrite this out, though. Um, we can just go ahead, and because this is addition, we can just combine like terms. So x squared, does it have any like terms? No, it's by itself, so we're going to rewrite that down here. x squared. All right, We have minus 8x plus 4x, right, so negative 8, 8x plus 4x, that gives us negative 4x, so we're going to write minus 4x, and then finally we have 4 minus 3, 4 minus 3 obviously gives us 1, so plus 1, and that is our answer. Now it says to indicate any restrictions in the domain, right, so anytime there's a restriction in the domain, the easiest way to tell that is if there is a denominator, there will be a restriction in the domain. Do we have a denominator here for this problem? We do not. So do we have to worry about any uh, restrictions in the domain? We don't. So what we're going to do is we're going to write our domain down here. Domain equals all real numbers, or domain is. We don't need to write equals, but domain is all real numbers. And you remember our all real numbers sign there, right? Fancy little r. Again, we will have restriction in, restrictions in the domain only if we are left with a denominator. And when we get to that, um, I'll show you what, what you need to do. Because our denominator can't be zero. So um, we'll get to that. F minus H of X. So this is F of X minus H of X. So F of X minus H of X. We're going to write these in parentheses. F of X is X squared minus 8X plus 4 close parentheses, minus h of x, which is x plus 2. And if you remember, we did problems like these. All right, this is just applying um, the function properties here. All right, but we've done problems just like these in the past, right, where we are adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing polynomials. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to distribute that subtraction sign. So that minus sign will change the sign of what's inside, all right, and then we can just get rid of the parentheses. So again, that's one of the reasons why we need to make sure we have them at first, because we need to distribute that minus sign to both terms, okay? If there were three terms over here, if there were three terms, then we'd have to distribute that three times, but because there's only a binomial, we need to distribute that minus sign to both terms in the binomial, so we are left with x squared minus 8x plus 4 minus x, minus 2. All right, now we combine like terms and we finish it up. So x squared is by itself, so we're going to go ahead and write that. No like terms to combine with x squared. Negative 8x minus x gives us minus 9x, because remember, minus x is minus 1x. Right? And then positive 4 minus 2 will end up giving us positive 2, so plus 2. And that is it. We're done. We do need to check to make sure there are no restrictions in the domain. Is there a denominator? Nope. So there's no restrictions in the domain, so the domain is all real numbers. Okay. Make sure you have those, too. I'll circle those so you don't forget those. All right. It's going to be very important here shortly. H times G of X. So H of X times G of X. All right. So we're going to have two binomials here that we're multiplying together. All right. So H of X comes first, x plus 2, so parentheses, x plus 2. Another reason why we need parentheses here is for this type of problem. h times g, g is 4x minus 3. Notice I didn't put the dot in between them. It's not necessary because we have parentheses already touching up against each other. Remember, if the parentheses are touching up against each other, they're trying to multiply. Yes, yeah, I did. All right, so here we go. Foil, all right, first, 
outer, inner, and last. So let's do those one at a time. I'll cross them off as I go. First, x times 4x gives us 4x squared. Done. x times negative 3 gives us negative 3x. Outer's done. Inner, 4x times 2 gives us a positive 8x. And then last, we're doing that. 2 times negative 3 gives us a negative 6. And last but not least, we need to combine the like terms. So we are left with 4x squared. No like terms there. And then we have minus 3x plus 8x, or negative 3x plus 8x, which gives us a positive 5x minus 6. That's our answer. And our domain, no restrictions, so we have all real numbers there. F over H of X. F over H of X. All right, so what we end up getting here is X squared minus 8X plus 4. Let me use the space that's provided for me here. X squared minus 8X plus 4, and that is all over h, which is x plus 2. Now, where's the parentheses? Remember what I said, all right? I'm going to put these in orange. The parentheses are, are actually technically there. You don't see them, but they're there because of this division sign. Because that division sign is over everything, that um, signals to us that whatever is above is in parentheses already. Whatever is below is also in parentheses. So we don't need to write them for the division, okay? All right, so um, we don't need to divide this out, all right? This is it. We are left with x squared minus 8x plus 4 over x plus 2. That's our new function. That's fine to keep it like this. So that is our final answer here, all right? So I'll go ahead and circle that. But we do need to find any restrictions in the domain. So remember, what cannot equal 0 in a fraction is the denominator, all right? The denominator cannot equal 0. So what we need to do is set our denominator equal to zero to figure out what number would end up being in the what number would um, could x be that would cause the denominator to equal zero that would be a, a problem right we don't want that um, that number does not fit in our domain all right so we're going to set that equal to zero x plus two equals zero subtract two from both sides and we're left with x equals negative two so think about it. if we plug negative two in for x right here, right? We would get negative 2 plus 2, which would give a 0 in the denominator, which is not possible. It's mathematically an illegal move there, right? So um, what we would say is since um, negative 2 would cause that to occur if x equaled negative 2, what we're going to say is that our domain, the restrictions of our domain, right, is just that x cannot be equal to negative 2, right? That is a restriction. So we're going to go ahead and circle that. And we figured that out by setting our denominator equal to zero right here, All right? Solving for whatever that number was that, that caused the denominator to equal zero, and that is a restriction in our domain, All right? So we wrote that right here as x cannot equal negative two, All right? And we're almost done. We got two problems left, All right? Good job. Keep it up. H over G of x. H over G of x, All right? So I'm going to go ahead and... Just erase this line here so we have enough space. H over G of X. All right, so we get X plus 2. Don't need the parentheses because this is division, as I said. X plus 2 over 4X minus 3. Once you plug that in, we're all set. We're all done. All right, unless there's like a, a factor that's blatantly right in your face. All right, but we're all done there. All right, that's our answer. But we need to figure out the restrictions in our domain. Remember, whenever we have a fraction... All right, a fraction bar, we're going to have a restriction in the domain, all right, unless it's a whole number down there, right, unless, the, but there's a variable down there, so we got to set that equal to zero, so 4x minus 3 equals zero, add 3 to both sides, add 3, we end up getting 4x equals 3, divide 4 to both sides, divide 4, and we're left with x equals 3 over 4, oops. Yeah. All right.
Well, that's a 4 down there, okay? So x equals 3 over 4. So, um, again, what does that mean? It means that that cannot be part of our domain. So our domain restriction, domain x cannot equal 3 over 4. That looks more like a 4, kind of. All right, and our last problem of the day, all right, and we'll call it a day here, is f times x of, um, sorry, f times g of x, all right? Um, so f of x times g of x, f of x is, and we're going to need space for this one, it's going to be one of the bigger ones that we do here, all right? So x squared, had to leave you with some work, of course, come on now, minus 8x plus 4 times, so we just put the parentheses there, g, which is 4x minus 3, all right? So remember what we have to do here, all right, we have to multiply each term here, one, two, this one, one, two. Each term needs to be multiplied twice, one, two. So it looks kind of like a mess, but just understand that um, each term, we have three terms in the front here, and we have two terms in the back, right? So um, each term in the front, right, needs to be multiplied by each term in the binomial. So two multiplications for each term in the trinomial. So let's start, all right? x squared times 4x. x squared times 4x gives us 4x to the third. It doesn't look like a 3 at all. There we go, 4x to the third. All right, so that one's done. All right, x squared times negative 3 gives us negative 3x squared. Okay. Next, let's cross that out. We got negative 8x times 4x, all right, which gives us negative 32x squared. Negative 8x times negative 3 gives us a positive 24x. So those two are done, all right? And then finally, 4 times 4x gives us positive 16x. And then 4 times uh, negative 3 gives us negative 12. It's a whole number. All right, so now we just need to combine like terms, all right? And see if there's any restrictions in the domain. We don't have a denominator, so there won't be. All right, so 4x cubed is all by itself. So we're going to just move that down. Now looking at x squared, we have negative 3x squared minus 32x squared right here. All right, so um, that is just going to go ahead and be negative 35x squared. Okay, and then we have 24x plus 16x gives us a positive 40x. And negative 12 is all by itself here, so we're just going to go ahead and move that down to minus 12. I'm running out of space here, but there are no restrictions in the domain, so the domain is all real numbers. All right, so make sure you just write that down. Hopefully you have some more space than I do with uh, this crazy stylus. Um, that's it. That's all we're going to do today. All right, um, I will post the assignment as well. Um, just make sure that you have... Um, you, you will not need to post these assignments right now. All right, you will not need to post the assignments. Just get those done. All right, we're going to finish this page here um, next class. All right, we're going to finish this page. Um, and then as far as the homework assignment goes... Um, the problems that I assigned this evening, all right, you don't need to, you do not need to submit them, but you should get them done because um, I'm going to give you the rest of the notes and enough, the rest of the homework tomorrow, all right, and um, once you have that, um, then you will be, you'll need to submit that to Google Classroom. So I'm not just doing them one at a time, right? Each lesson is just going to be one note assignment su submitted and one homework that's submitted. All right. If you have questions, feel free to email me. I'm trying to get back to you guys as as um, soon as I possibly can. Um, and, yeah, just let me know if you have any questions. Keep up the good work. hope you guys are staying safe, and I will talk to you guys soon.